Hello and welcome to a quick overview of Excel Tutorial 1 for K201. In this tutorial, the book explains the user interface components of Excel. So starting up here with the title bar, which shows the name of the file that's open. The Office button, which is the only menu left in Office 2007. Then we have the Quick Access toolbar, the tabs, and the ribbon. The buttons on the ribbon are grouped, so this is called the clipboard group, the font group, and the alignment group. Okay. The reason for the quick access toolbar is so that I can get to buttons regardless of which tab I'm on. So if I'm working with the foreground color a lot today, then I may want to just right click on it, add it to the quick access toolbar. Now, whichever tab I go to, I can easily change the foreground color when I need to. Okay. I can also right click on the buttons in the quick access toolbar and remove them. Okay. Then we have the name box which shows the reference for the active cell. Active cell is the one that's listening to the keyboard so anything that I type goes into the active cell. We have the formula bar which shows the content of the active cell the column references and the row references. Then we have the scroll bars on this side and the zoom in button and the zoom out button. The page layout buttons, I can look at a paged view or a normal view. The sheet tabs. Now an Excel file is called a workbook. So in a book we would expect some pages. So there are three by default and we can add more or we can right click and delete the ones that we don't need. And if we end up with a lot of tabs here that don't fit in this much space, we can use these four little buttons to navigate. So if we need to go to the right, or go to the last tab, or go left, or go to the first tab, then we would use these buttons here. On page EX5, there is a table that shows a lot of the user uh, interface components and their functions. And I would suggest that uh, you take a look at that. Next, let's also take a look at the uh, height and width of uh, rows and columns. All right, so if, um, well, before we do that, let me go ahead and actually uh, start creating the some of the uh, structure for this workbook. So the first sheet tab, I'm going to rename that by double clicking and typing in documentation. Okay, it's a good practice to call the first sheet documentation and explain what this workbook is about. So you generally put purpose and put uh, the date and the author. Okay, so for the author, I'm just going to go ahead and put in my name here. Now you see that uh, my name kind of spills over into the C column because the B column isn't wide enough. One thing I could do is just click and drag to make it wider. But if I'm trying to aim for the end of this, that'll be difficult. So I can make it wider and then just double click it, the border on the right hand side, and it will auto fit. Okay. And now let's take a look at uh, sheet two here, and we're going to put some data in. Now, there are four kinds of data we can put in in a worksheet generally. The one is uh, text, and that's used for um, labeling purposes. So things like name, address, and um, quantity, so whatever quantity we're entering, and some price, and the cost. Okay, so those would be labels. Then we would put in actual data or values, and the values would be things that, um, like numbers and uh, actual entries for names. So I'm going to put in a name here. And another name. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and put an address in. In this tutorial, the book shows you how to enter two lines of data on one row. So lines and rows means different things. Okay. So we're on row two, but we can put data on multiple lines. So the way we do that is here's the street address. And now I'm going to push Alt Enter hold down the Alt key, press Enter. That creates a second line in row two. Okay, so this would be 
city state zip okay now what happened it put the data on not two lines but what looks like four or five lines the reason it did that is uh, the text wrapped around okay because the column isn't wide enough oh well, we can fix that we can make the column wider okay. and if you're trying to use the auto fit feature it generally is helpful to make the column wider than it needs to be then double click the row height uh, so below the two the border right below the two I'm going to double click that and then I can double click the border to the right of the B column okay so I'll auto fit the row height and the column width so for quantity let me just gonna put in five here and we'll put in 1550 and um, right over here that's gonna put some other um, addresses in uh, let's make it a um, and again alt enter and city state zip okay and then let's put some quantity here and a price okay so next topic is entering formulas so what we want is a formula that calculates the cost based on this price and this quantity okay. now I could do one of two things I could say equals but the equal always is at the beginning of something that needs to be evaluated okay. uh, like a formula or a function uh, and the equal sign and then I could put in the cell references I could say C2 times D2 right? so this is C2 then that's D2 those are the cells I'm trying to multiply or I could just click on them I could say C2 times and then click on D2 press enter and copy and paste in the bottom right corner of the active cell there is a little square called the fill handle if we click and drag that it will copy and paste the values into the range that we select let's also take a look at fun uh, functions a function is a predefined formula right? so if we wanted to calculate the sum then we would say equals sum but now we have to tell sum of what and those are entered as parameters and I'm going to just highlight that range okay. enter there's the sum I could also do a copy and paste uh, control C on Windows or command C on the Mac and then to paste is control V as in Victor or command V depending on which platform you're on okay so the reason this doesn't have the dollar signs just is the uh, formatting so I'm just going to click the dollar sign there and um, what else okay so now let's get into the last topic which is the print preview these little dotted lines that you see here and near the end are the page boundaries by default or the current page boundaries and the, sometimes it, it's easier to adjust page breaks by uh, doing that visually so by looking at your pages and we don't have a lot of data here but we can still try this out if I click the page break preview down here in the uh, next to the zoom button it puts my worksheet in a page break preview this is showing me this is page one which will have everything on it and if I don't want everything on page one I can right click and insert a page break okay, so now I have a page one and a page two but you can also click and drag these page boundaries so the page one is there and the page two you can't read but it's right in there okay so that's the page break break preview and then we can also go back to the normal preview or the normal view by clicking this button right here okay now the dotted lines will be there just because that's showing you where the page breaks are okay so that's pretty much it for tutorial one thank you for listening